All right, guys, welcome back to the um, the instructor portion of the TOGAF workshop with System Architects. So let's go through the business architecture um, uh, part of the agenda. So let's go back to the um, extended content meta model. Um, you can see that the business architecture of the um, of the TOGAF extended content meta model essentially is is in the yellow portion of this meta model and so you're capturing um, functions and processes and um, who does what the actors and the roles um, you're also um, capturing where things happen location and um, business service acts as a as a layer between um, it can act as a layer between your business architecture and, and your um, IT applications and, and technology so um, we want to understand capabilities, functions. Um, the difference between capability and function is a separate so uh, uh, topic of conversation that we can go on about. But basically, um, a capability-driven architecture is something that um, is um, been talked about a lot in the last couple of years in, in the enterprise architecture space. A business has capabilities. You are improving capabilities as you go forward. And there's a lot of different ways to understand what that means to the business and how to, to architect it. Uh, business functions are traditional. Business functions, uh, the, the business performs functions. Uh, marketing, product management, uh, builds products, right? There are functions that a business does and there are processes. How those functions are orchestrated. What processes you use to um, to um, do those functions and then there are people involved and people have different roles right? and sometimes uh, people play different roles right a product manager could be a marketing person if you're at a trade show could be a documentation person if he's writing up a data sheet for the product etc um, so processes are orchestrated uh, orchestrate functions services encapsulate functions business services could be manual or automatic um, and then you have applications that enable services or functions and in the prior section we talked about logical the difference between logical and physical application components um, information data is data um, the data is out there whether you um, talk about the physical data like um, um, databases that have tables and columns of information uh, parts people etc um, or you have um, you encapsulated into data components which is what TOGAF does a higher level um, uh, capture of data um, and then logical data as well in there if you have logical data models technologies we talked about earlier logical and physical technologies Java JavaScript SQL Server um, etc and then locations of things locations of applications technologies and people and so um, just a little um, aside here, a function is something that an organization does. According to TOGAF, a function delivers business capabilities closely aligned to an organization but not explicitly governed by the organization. And a process is how the organization performs a function. Typically in an enterprise architecture, you're modeling out core business processes. Right? You want to not necessarily go too deep because processes change and, and um, you don't want to boil the ocean uh, per se. Um, there are many cross-function processes and cross-organizational processes. Um, according to Toga, process, process is a flow of interactions between functions and services that cannot be physically deployed. All processes should describe the flow of execution for a function and therefore the deployment of a process is through the function it supports. In other words, an application implements a function that has a process, not an application implements a process. And so if you go back to that slide, you'll see that in the meta model that's pointed out by the fact that function is related to process, function is related to application through business service. Um, right? And so um, just pointing that out as an aside, well, here, here it is on a purple crayon. Um, function is realized by a process and function um, is bounded by a business service which may be automated by an IS service which is further implemented by an application. Right? And that's how to read the meta model of TOGAF. Um, so in this workshop we are not um, uh, modeling information services this slide is a little wrong. We are modeling business services. We added that to the to the workshop. Um, okay, 
Um, here's some more literature from TOGAF. Wonderful information up on the Open Group Architecture uh, website, um, uh, where uh, they describe how to uh, build an enterprise architecture and what you're capturing. You can see here that um, functions encapsulate uh, business services, which encapsulate functions, functions of the business service, which are um, uh, performed by um, information services, um, applications which use technology. It's another way to look at this information. So back to our um, um, uh, chart which showed um, the architecture of enterprise architecture how architecture is used as a portal into the organization. Um, you can capture business processes um, in the en enterprise architecture tool, in this case system architect. You can also capture processes in other tools, especially if they support the BPMN, the business processing modeling notation. Part of that specification is an interchange format, the BPMN 2.0 interchange format, which is a really nice specification. Um, to exchange information between process modeling tools. So um, in this lab, we've actually modeled something out in a tool called IBM Blueworks Live, which is a, um, a thin browser uh, process modeling tool. And then we've generated some BPMN 2.0 interchange um, specification. And we import, we, you guys import that into system arc that creates a BPMN model. And so any tool out there, any business process tool that you have that supports the BPMN 2.0 interchange, you should be able to do this uh, with that tool as well. Um, other options here, um, I mentioned it in the, in the lab actually you model a BPMN flow in system architect, the EA tool. Um, you have an option of importing that if you're out of time. You, you could play around with modeling some BPMN and just Im then import the model if you want to do that. Um, and because I've we've we've modeled it and generated it to XML, so you import that through System Architect's native XML um, um, interchange format to bring it in. Um, there is also I mentioned earlier there's a tool called System Architect XT, which is a thin browser. Um, a sister product of System Architect that enables you to um, act on the architecture. You can be in a hotel lobby in Peoria, Illinois, log into a computer with right credentials, start working on your enterprise architecture that may be physically housed on a server in New York City, for example, and, um, and model BPMN and right into the repository. You can bring in Microsoft Visio models as well. We have a a Visio Mapper utility on IBM Developer Works that enables you to bring in not only BPMN but any any diagram type that you've modeled in Visio into the enterprise architecture and system architect, and that's where the customizable meta model is so important because you can you can add definition types, diagram types, relationship types, property sets, anything you want to the to the uh, to the meta model to capture what you've got out there, um, and then. Um, Using reference models, we're going to use reference models here. So in the lab, uh, I mentioned before there um, there are many reference models. So you don't reinvent the wheel; have to reinvent the wheel. One of them I mentioned is APQC, um, terrific website. Um, a lot of uh, organizations and in industry, including IBM, um, are uh, contributing to uh, the processes as we see them in the industry. Um, to create a catalog of processes, and so you can use that to um, to model some of your core business processes. And um, the APQC provides this information for different industries: banking, um, telecom, um, uh, etc., uh, pharmaceuticals, um, across all industries. And so let's go forward to Lab Three. Um, in this part of the lab you're going to import some business functions from um, the business end of the organization and you're going to um, they're going to come in from a spreadsheet and um, that spreadsheet if you want to take a look at it it's part of the student file it's an Excel spreadsheet the one thing I would point out about it is that um, we've adjusted the columns of the spreadsheet so that the first the, the name of the first column is name because that is the property in System Architect 
that you're bringing that spreadsheet into, the function name. Right? So your spreadsheet from the business department may have had some other um, name of that column, like function. But we change it to name, and that's the one thing you really need to do. Otherwise, you can modify the meta model to um, um, coincide with every column name, or adjust the spreadsheet to coincide with the TOGAF meta model, but however you want to work it. Um, so you're importing business functions, you're dragging them onto a diagram, you're auto building a decomposition diagram, adding some new functions in this um, example um, for. Um, um, well, the uh, the workshop tells you what functions they are for this example, and um, you're understanding function owners optionally. All right, so that's lab three one, and then let's talk more about process flow. So we you can have process hierarchies, right, and you can have process flow diagrams, um, business uh, flow decomposition diagrams as well. So you can take a process that exists on a process hierarchy and then you can decompose that with a lower level business process flow diagram. These are all BPMN notation diagrams, right? And um, I mentioned before um, the sister product SAXT enables you to model on the web. This is what it looks like. And this is the architecture where system architect is, um, is uh, accessing uh, um, information on a, on a database, SQL Server for example. Um, and then XT can access that same database live. You can be out in a hotel lobby in Peoria, Illinois and access the same information. It's a live repository. So if I'm modeling in something and, and Joe opens up a definition, for example, that I'm editing, Joe gets a read-only version of it and a message that says Lou's, Lou's working on that right now. So that's the kind of live interaction you have as you're modeling. So if somebody's in a hotel lobby in Peoria, Illinois and is modeling against the architecture and opens up a process and editing it and somebody in New York City is trying to do the same thing, um, he will get that message that the, the guy in Peoria is, and his ordered ideas is editing it and until he saves it, puts it away, then he can open it up. There's a lot of ways to exchange information. You can also merge stuff back and forth between encyclopedias. Lots of options. Any case, um, Visio integration. Here's an example of a Visio a landscape diagram that was imported into um, into System Architect through the Visio Mapper um, um, utility that is available at no charge on Developer Works for download. And again, you're mapping anything you've got in Visio to something in System Architect. So you want to customize that meta model first. Here's BlueWorks, wonderful tool. This is a, a process uh, flow modeled in BlueWorks on the web, um, supporting bidirectional BPMN uh, interchange, and we use that in the workshop. Um, and so in the workshop, you're going to import um, this diagram that was built in BlueWorks that was exported out to BPMN. It comes out in a .zip file that's part of BPMN interchange spec. And then you're importing it. Your job is to import it into SA. It comes in pretty quick. Um, and then also use of APQC. So we provided some links to some of the PDFs on APQC. And again, um, um, this is um, industry standards for different industries, um, uh, process um, uh, um, categorization, lists of processes used in different aspects of, of industries. And so here you can see some of the industries APQC covers. Um, and there's the layers of process, high level, second level, third, fourth, fifth level, very detailed processes. And, and I take this quote from John Tesmer from APQC um, that uh, I thought was interesting in explaining it. Um, the premise is that the APQC is a classification or taxonomy of business process similar to how a dictionary classifies words, right? Um, a dictionary doesn't tell you how to uh, write a sentence, uh, doesn't tell you about grammar or sentence construction, uh, it tells you these are the words you can use and this is what they mean. So uh, that's what APQC is and you're going to use that here. Um, this, these particular processes, I uh, have a phone ringing, I'll let that ring. Um, you're going to use these processes to model our process flow in System Architect. All right, so on to the labs. Um, I guess that's labs 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 3. The functional stuff in labs 3.1. And then examine the APQC processes and, and uh, for banking, which uh, IBM um, is um, 
partly responsible for, uh, contributed uh, to. And then also then lab 3.3, which is modeling a process flow and system architect and we're using BPMN uh, 2.0, uh, or optionally importing it if you have no time. And then um, um, bringing in those processes from, uh, from BlueWorks. Okay, and then linking the processes to the functions they orchestrate and creating some parent-child navigation, which is just navigation, uh, um, uh, which ends up being fairly essential in an enterprise architect should be able to, to kind of navigate from layers of the architecture high level down through diagrams as well as through definitions. So um, that's in the lab as well. All right, so uh, go ahead and, and do those. Uh, uh, exercises and then come back to the video and we'll go through the next um, step, uh, the next phase, which is the business service layer. All right, talk to you in a bit.